Hi, this is your County Executive Ed Day, and we're here again to uh, bring you a COVID-19 update here in Rockland County. Um, I want to welcome you to Phase 3. That is the big news we have today. I'm here with uh, John Lyon, my Communications Director. Uh, he has been fielding your questions, and we will get to them in a bit. I want to just uh, cover some topics or some information that is kind of important, frankly, and that we can get into some of the specific questions that you were good enough to, to raise for us. Uh, today, we welcome back to all of our county employees, or many of our county employees, actually, who have been working from home during the pandemic. Um, just so you know the background of that, as you may recall, it seems like a long time. On March 16th, Governor Cuomo issued an executive emergency order, uh, which limited local government's uh, footprint, so to say, in New York, to, and, and mandated we operated 50% of our personnel on site. Uh, this was designed to increase social distancing in, a, in an emergency situation, and while it has been effective, it has also been quite difficult. Practically overnight, we developed and implement, implemented some plans that so that many of our employees will be able to work from home and continue to provide residents the critical services that they, they deserve. Now, as we welcome them back, we are, approaching this, we are approaching this with our motto in mind, safety first and people always. We have implemented many changes. We have moved desks, installed barriers, posted more signage than I've ever seen, and overall adapted at a speed that is previously unknown to government. Um, I won't get into all the details. We had, had a press conference yesterday uh, that detailed much of the information. Uh, you can find some of the details on the rocklandgov.com website. Uh, there was coverage in the Journal News and also with News 12. Um, but we continue an enhanced approach uh, as it relates to cleaning procedures, uh, to have a new entry protocol for visiting uh, to any of our buildings. Employees and visitors will have to pass through a screening checkpoint. Uh, each person must wear a co face covering or a mask. Each person must read and attest to the health care health check questionnaire, uh, which asks a number of things, including if you have symptoms of COVID-19, have you had close contact with someone who is confirmed or suspected to have had COVID, and that they, they themselves have not tested positive for COVID in the last 14 days. This probably sounds familiar to most of you by now, because every time you appointment for a dentist, doctor, those situations, these are the questions that you, you will always ask. Um, each person will then get a temperature check, either with the new thermal scanner that we have or a non-contact thermometer. Um, a person with a fever of 100.4, 100.4, not 104, which came up yesterday, uh, degrees Fahrenheit or higher, will not be admitted to the building. If someone does not pass one of these steps, they will be refused entry and given information for how to proceed. If they're an employee, they'll be asked to return home and contact the supervisor. If you're a member of the public, you'll be asked to return and contact your health care provider for specific directions on how to proceed. Uh, if you would like more information about the changes in policy and procedure we have put in place, you can visit our updated website, which John will put put in the comments of the section, the comment section of the video. Uh, but basically, it's rocklandgov.com uh, forward slash rockland dash forward forward slash. So that's the basic uh, the basic site we have created to uh, to show you what's been happening here to comport and comply with phase three guidelines. Uh, before getting into the other industries that are reopening today, something very important. I want to take a moment to thank our employees who have worked tirelessly throughout the pandemic. You, are, our residents, have not heard much about this, and that's a good thing because we have provided services. You could not go to a DMV. Uh, there are a lot of things you could not do that were governmental in nature. You have been able to conduct business here in Rockland County, and I'm very proud of that. But that is dedication uh, to service. And that has helped thousands of our residents during the pandemic. They maintain those services during the worst of times. And I want to thank you all for the incredible contributions that you have made. Uh, as part of phase three, several other industries are able to open up today. Restaurants, and I know you're all waiting for this, uh, drum roll, restaurants are ready to resume indoor dining at 50% capacity with social distancing measures in place. Spars. Nail salons, yes, nail salons, folks, and massage parlors can reopen with safety precautions in place. Tattoo and piercing parlors can also open. 
I will tell you now for the record, I will not be partaking in any of those activities, even though they're opened up, but you are more than welcome to do so. Uh, the size limit for gatherings, it was increased from 10 to 25. And as more businesses are eligible to reopen, I want to make clear a clear reminder to business owners out there. Plans to create your health and safety are, 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 and file your affirmations through the New York State, through the forward.ny.gov website. Again, forward.ny.gov. Uh, the governor had originally said, as it related to these plans, and they are relatively straightforward, they're, indus they're industry driven. Um, they are common sense to things that we're used to already, bottom line, through the CDC. So these are not difficult things to do. Those of you who are resistant to computers, uh, this is not the time to be resistant to one. We need you to get on these, get on this, uh, get on and, and get this paperwork done. The governor originally had said there will be a slight grace period uh, for businesses to prepare for these plans, but it's been known for now a number of weeks that this has to be done. So grace periods will will not be around anymore. Uh, but you have to have your 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 plan on file in the business in case of there's, there's an inspection. So you go to the website, you file your plan off the template that's provided. You have to affirm that. You have to sign off it. That's very important because a number of people, I believe, are not completing the submission, uh, and that's creating a problem because you're not getting logged in uh, as a business in compliance, and you, we don't want to have that happen to you. Um, and when you download, you can download a PDF, and you can keep that that inspection sheet at your uh, at your place of business, and it's available for any inspection. Let me be very clear about something. This is not your local government talking. This is your state government telling you. Uh, the governor has already threatened more than once to suspend the liquor licenses for restaurants that violate the law. And as of last week, the state liquor authority had suspended the license of 18 establishments statewide, found to be in violation of the governor's orders. At least two of those have paid $10,000 fines and have had their licenses restored after that payment of a fine, according to an SLA spokesman. Another 55 places across the state have been charged with violating the governor's orders, with suspension still possible. We know many businesses are in tough financial shape after being shut down mostly for the last few months. But we also know that you've been resilient and you've managed to get through this. We want to help you. Local government is here to assist you in that endeavor. So what we need from you is to make sure you don't do anything that has the governor's or the governor's office pull your license or suspend you or fine you. That's not what we, we want to see happen here. Uh, we, we, I've been very clear in every broadcast we have done, uh, the guidelines are out there. Uh, we are not looking to be onerously inspecting every location. We, there will be inspections done at times. Uh, the inspections will often be done by town and village personnel who normally do go out during the day um, uh, to do inspections. They, uh, the marching orders are very clear, not just from me, but from the town supervisors and village mayors. We're looking for compliance. We're not looking to fine you. We just want to be able to go into your location, take a look at the business plan, the safety plan you have, look around, take a look, and we have the horseshoes and hand grenades approach. If it's close, it counts. We're not going to bring the tape measure out and, and give you a fine for a five foot and seven inch distance as opposed to six feet. But please go to this forward.ny.gov website, read the guidelines, fill out the form, and submit your aff affirmations, and please sign off and print out the document. This way you know that you have successfully completed the process and you won't have to worry about uh, get any kind of fines from the state. Once you submit them, you will be contacted via email by our Office of Economic Development and Tourism. And not to trouble you or bother you, but we're going to actually send you a reopening certificate. And I mentioned this last time. This, uh, sim simply put, uh, this is our idea. Can you see it, John? Yeah. This is our idea of uh, saying this is a good housekeeping seal of approval. Those of you who are in my age group will know what I'm talking about. Um, you can post this to show that you have done the safety plan. Um, it's a way of creating not just a, a sense of safety and looking out for the health and the safety of your employees and your customers. Uh, we have said before many times, there are people who have really been thrown by this, a lot of anxiety out there. Just checking the boxes, in my view, is not automatically going to be enough. It's important and incumbent, frankly, upon the businesses to take steps to assuage some of the concerns that are out there. And you all know what I'm talking about. Some of us are ready and happy to go anywhere, 
We're, we feel like we've been freed. Uh, some of us are still not quite sure, not quite comfortable, always wonder what the numbers are, which is fine. But recognize that dynamic, dynamic because this way you can take actions as a, as a business owner to ensure that um, those concerns are addressed in the best way possible. So now we can get on to some questions, John. Okay, I'll give you a minute to get a drink of water here and just talk for a few. Um, as we entered phase three today, um, do you know when New York State will start releasing phase four right. guidelines? Okay, well, that actually um, may come up tonight. We have a control room meeting. The control room uh, is the seven, uh, the seven county executives, uh, commissioner, and other representatives from the governor's office. We have a couple of other people coming on today, which indicates to me this might have some added substance of matter uh, to the discussion. So that's at six o'clock tonight. So um, those details are still lacking. Uh, we will bring this up if it is not brought up in the control room um, on its own. Um, but typically New York State provides the guide, updated guidance maybe a few days before in the, any region is scheduled to enter a new phase in order to give business some time to prepare safety plans and file their affirmations. Uh, as things currently stand here in New York, uh, Central New York, Mohawk Valley, Southern Tier, Finger Lakes, and North Country may be able to enter phase four by Friday. Um, if, they, if we keep up with the previous schedule, we should be, begin to see more information posted. Um, and um, this is something we're pushing New York State to provide, but unfortunately we have not seen any of this information come out yet. Um, and just to be clear, when that information is shared, it will be on the forward.ny.gov website, and we will be posting about it as well. Absolutely. So, um, the next person who wrote in operates a hair salon, which opened during phase two. They're currently required to test their employees and themselves every two weeks. Right. Um, do you know how long that requirement is going to stay in place? No, we'll be asking about this tonight, the control room, because this reminds me of what happened with the, uh, the nursing homes. If I remember correctly, they were being tested twice each week, uh, and the test involves putting a swab up your nose quite a bit. It's not a fun experience to say the least, but um, it's not painful. But doing it 100 and few, 100 plus times a year would uh, not be make for a very happy person, and it, it could be injurious. So um, we're going to make sure nobody nobody kind of forgets about that. So we'll bring it up. We'll see if we can get an answer from them. Typically, they. They take our, our questions and go back, check, and come back to us later on. But uh, rest assured, we will bring that up. And we'll continue to ask and urge and provide us answers and that we'll, shape, uh, we'll share with you as that becomes available. Okay. Uh, our next question comes from a manager of a retail store. Uh, how do we or should we respond to a customer who says uh, they cannot wear a mask? Okay. Let me break this down into two pieces because they are two somewhat distinct issues. The governor's emergency order, Executive Order 202.17, it states an individual who is over the age of two and, med and able to medically tolerate a face covering, covering, not a mask necessarily, shall be required to cover their nose and their mouth with that mask or cloth face covering when in a public place and unable to maintain or when not maintaining social distance. So that does not mean if you're walking down the street all by yourself or with your significant other, for example, and somebody sees you, I would suggest to the person who sees you don't, I know you could be compelled to say something, but you should not be saying something. That person's not violating anything. If you are alone, if you're walking around, there's nobody around, you don't have to have a face mask on. There's no reason for it. You should have one at the ready because you may, run, you may walk near somebody then you put the mask on. Um, it's, a little, it's a little arduous, I know, understand that, and maybe un, you know, uh, cumbersome, but uh, that's, that's the way it is. So um, when you can't maintain that distance, you should wear it. Now, there was another order that was, um, another order that was uh, issued by the governor. Uh, it was 202.34, and that really dealt with the issue of stores. Now, we've gotten a lot of complaints about this here, um, the fact of the matter is right now, if you go into a store and you do not have a face covering on, the manager's store is authorized to tell you you cannot stay there. You must leave. Okay? Um, the question we get mostly, and this is something that we, you may remember, we actually mentioned this a while back because I had some concerns about how open-ended this was. Um, the rule has been in place for April 15th. but. If the person says to a manager they're unable to wear a mask, 
I'm going to be very blunt with you. The conversation stops there. Um, and we're going to tell you why. You don't know what the reasons are. Um, you have something called the American for Disabilities Act. Most people who um, are enlightened enough to understand, people have disabilities that you don't see. And all too often, we some people become very judgmental when they see someone who's uh, engaged in a situation that um, is, is there because of the ADA and they feel that they should not be because they, they don't look disabled. It's not a matter about looking, all right? So there's a situation now for that store owner that, um, or that manager, for example, could end up in a, in a situation where he or she may be liable for action taken. You may elevate the situation to violation of federal law if it's an ADA requirement. So look, the bottom line is this. Everybody knows that the best assessment we have right now is to whenever possible have your face covered that is you you can't ignore that because it's working is it the be all and end all of everything likely not but it is seemingly an, a, an important piece of the strategy to keep this virus virus uh down not to let it get up again and start targeting our people so um there are going to be people who are not going to listen that is just a matter of course and a matter of fact. We cannot change people who refuse to think and refuse to be respectful, not only of themselves, but of their own families. Because they bring a disease home, they may affect their own. So, you know, all I can tell people is, again, most people are law abiding. It's like when you take your car out, most people obey the rules of the road. There are a few who don't and it irritates us. I know it does, I'm, not, I'm one of them too. How could that person go through the uh, right on red without even stopping? All right, it happens. So I would just suggest that people understand that it may not be as obvious as it seems to be, but I, again, encourage you, if you're able to do so, cover your face with a mask or a face covering and when you're unable to maintain that six feet of distance. Okay. Um, the governor has announced that schools and programs for special needs children can open. They're allowed to open. Yet Rockland, uh, this person writes, is choosing not to. Um, they ask if you can just implement the plan for September right now. Okay, number one, um, it, Rockland is not refusing to do anything. When you say Rockland, Rockland County government, we are not engaged nor directly involved in that issue. Okay, it's something that we have to comport with the State Department of Health. Our health department will essentially work with BOCES and the local schools to ensure they're complying with New York State Health Department guidelines. But let's be clear about something. Uh, I want to clarify that our districts are not, they're not choosing not to. They are unable to implement the guidelines they receive from the New York State Department of Health in time to offer in-person summer programming. Um, I will tell you directly, and I mentioned the control room before, this issue came up numerous times, weeks ago, about dealing with this issue um, and we asked it repeatedly over and over. One of our county executives, Marcus Malinaro, has a special needs child. It's very, very, obviously very personal to him. He raised this many times. And eventually, these, these guidelines were put out. Um, there was a letter put out by BOCES to parents on June 11th um, that spoke about the challenges they had. Um, they were just unable to uh, comply with the, the very detailed requirements that contain in the ultimate um, authority for the, that this a state granted our schools to come open. Um, unfortunately, and the opinion of the experts on the ground here, uh, with the governor waiting so long to make this decision, they simply did not have enough time to prepare properly to make sure the children were safe. That's really what it came down to. Um, and uh, again, it's a frustration for many, and uh, the frustration is not lost upon the gentleman who is speaking right now to you. Um, and the last question of the day, we just entered phase three. When will we enter phase four? Okay. Um, the phases were set up with two weeks in between because at the time, that was the test measure for uh, how long you might be harboring the, uh, the COVID-19 um, and not be symptomatic as of yet. Uh, that is not, a, that really has been altered uh, somewhat already. The governor himself has even referenced that in some of the statements he has made where he's, he's being driven by the data and the metrics. The ability to spot hot spots and other outbreaks uh, as they begin has gotten so much more detailed that the two week period now serves as a guide. Um, so right now, if we use that two week number, the, uh, we will be entering phase four on July 7th. 
I know you, I'm going to say this again, I know those of you who have tuned in before are going to remember this. Um, we have been advocating to advance this timeline a mere 96 hours. Now, some people felt you got to stick to the plan, stick to the guide. Well, it's just it, it's a guide. Uh, New York State and Rockland County in particular, and the Mid-Hudson region, uh, infection rates are below any, uh, any expectation. Deaths have flattened out, thank God. But even more important, the hospitalization rates have almost disappeared. So there really is no reason that we cannot make some minor adjustments. We tried to do this um, before, before coming to phase three to give our, our, our dads a Father's Day without sweating what restaurants they can go to, to get our, our economy another weekend of business as opposed to opening up on a Tuesday, uh, which really is relatively dead time for lo many of our local restaurants. Um, but we have another special day coming up. It's called Independence Day. And we've been very clear with the governor's staff that, you know, we need to get into a place of fewer restrictions for that day. And it's more than just symbolism at this point. Independence Day in this particular situation, I think, provides for something very positive for the people to believe in, um, that freedom that we have. Uh, it's, it's, it's symbolic to that measure. And, um, you know, I believe very strongly that we should open up a few days early or maybe on that Friday, July 3rd. Um, I think that's Friday, July 3rd, yes. correct? Yes. Okay. Um, and, and let's have a clear shot in enjoying the 4th of July. And the other part is, is the reason why the decision needs to be made sooner rather than later, we already, we already have municipalities who are canceling their, their 4th of July and their Independence Day uh, parties because they have to know going in whether or not it'll be allowed or not. And a, a lot of these plans are falling apart. And also, as, as something that came to me, and I, I have to admit, I had not thought of this myself, but with the inability to have fireworks shows where you have professionals doing the fireworks, my feeling is you're going to see an increase in injuries from fireworks because people will be doing them by themselves. Uh, that, I think, is just an, um, an, a practical issue at this point. So I'm, I'm urging, we're going to be urging the governor's staff again to try to get this moved up, uh, you know, decide over the next couple of days, move this up to July 3rd so we can have a, a a Independence Day celebration that's unfettered by these fettered by by the these rules and regulations, and just go out and just enjoy ourselves and have a nice time, socially distance, of course. Yeah. Um, um, and yeah. that does it for the questions for today. So I want to thank everyone who was able to to write in. We appreciate it, right. and you're welcome to reach out to us anytime. Absolutely, absolutely. So, in in closing, again, I just want to offer up that we've had experience um, these past few months that were unexpected and unprecedented. Uh, just an unbelievable turn of events that nobody, I think, could ever have predicted. Uh, we've suffered illness, we have suffered loss, we have suffered worry and anxiety at a level never, never previously known by most people here. But we have come so far and we're making progress and we will continue to do so because we are doing this together. The precautions we put in place here and on businesses and the industries for the reopenings are designed to keep you safe. And our strength and contact tracing program stands ready to investigate any new cases that, and, and contact the people and places that have been exposed and where they can take proactive steps to protect themselves and others. I will remind you this is something that we here in Rockland are well experienced at. We use this with the, with the measles epidemic with great success in knocking down that epidemic uh, within a year. We were looked at by the nation um, as, as the, the, uh, the template for addressing that crisis. Um, these steps include a precautionary mandatory quarantine, depending on your level of contact uh, with an infected person, or if you went specifically to a, a place of business, responding there, you know, ensuring that they do an additional cleanup, uh, even though that right now it looks like this virus does not last on, on services as long as once thought, but also afford opportunity for other shoppers and clients to be aware of what's going on, and also the employees at that particular location. Um, we here in Rockland County are very blessed to have the planning department working with the health department and developing an amazing ability to, uh, to identify new cases nearly in real time. So it gives us a chance to see where these cases are, how, we can, how, how and people have interacted, what, what resources can we deploy uh, to help and protect others in those areas, whether it be education, whether it be information, hand sanitizers like uh, personal personal protection equipment like masks. But you know, this is something we all have a role in. I made a comment earlier about some, some people just don't get it. We each have to play a role here. There's no other getting around this. this. We don't have a vaccine. We don't know if there's any immunity to this. We just don't know. 
So we, we're left with using what seemingly has worked quite well. But to do that, we must continue the good habits of social distancing, wearing a face covering if you are near others, and you cannot properly distance yourself. And above all, basic hygiene. Wash your hands, wash them well. 20 seconds of soaping, rinse them off or use hand sanitizer. You know, and also what you can see here now is that from, from Rockland County, what is expected, uh, expected by government or the private sector applies equally to our county government. These basic steps are what I will allow us to continue reopening with a safety first, people always motto. So when you, you come here as a resident for, to a ser for service, you can have a comfort level, just like I'm asking of the businesses to have a comfort level. When you come here, you're gonna know that we are serious about your health and your safety. And that's what you should have, no matter where you go, which is why we have these, these rules and regulations. Rockland County has been and remains open for business, and that business is serving you, our community. Um, uh, just And one more thing I wanna add on, we're gonna be changing up our format a little bit as we continue to move forward. Uh, we'll be doing these sessions now once a week, uh, unless there are larger concerns that need addressing. And depending how the questions come, we may expand the questions uh, beyond the COVID issue. Uh, there may be other concerns you want to discuss, and I'd be happy to, to bring that information forward to you. So we're going to be signing off until next Tuesday, which is June 30th at 4.15 p.m., the time we've been doing regularly. Uh, again, don't hesitate to uh, message either my page or the Rockland County government page, uh, and we'll be happy to answer your questions or direct you to the right place that's what we're here to do. So with that, you have a wonderful afternoon, and we'll see each other soon.